Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. We are getting an idea now of just how safe San Diego schools are when it comes to the water. Lead testing results are starting to come in. I'm Virginia Chong. And I'm Brian Schlonsky in for Jason Martinez. These results coming in sooner than expected. 10 News reporter Mary McKenzie is live in San Ysidro where several schools in that district are still using bottled water. Hey, Mary. Hey, good morning, Brian, Virginia. We're here at La Mirada Elementary School where they are still on bottled water today, but they just spent more than $10,000 to replace all of the fixtures and the water lines here at this school. Now, as for San Diego Unified School District, they just received the first round of results back from the district wide testing. As promised, the district has posted those results on its website. You can even see them on your phone all below levels for lead, bacteria, copper, all of those things, for instance, meaning they have come back negative. So they started that comprehensive testing just two weeks ago. They'll test each school in the district before the end of the school year in June. They don't know why the test results came back two weeks early. They hope that trend continues, though. Schools in both San, uh, San Diego and San Ysidro districts are some of the first in the state to test each facility after three schools in San Ysidro, including La Mirada, had their drinking water test positive for lead and bacteria. Now that bottled water for schools like La Mirada is costing the San Ysidro, San Ysidro district $1,000 per day. They have come back with a negative test so far for bacteria. They'll wait, hopefully within a couple of weeks, they will have the results for lead and copper here. We're live at La Mirada Elementary. Mary McKenzie, 10 News. Thank you, Mary. You can get a list of results on 10news.com. Look for that in the story on our homepage. Now, we are continuing to follow this breaking news situation in North County. We have an update for you. Arson investigators are still on scene checking out this explosion. Now, this was sent to us by one of our viewers, and this happened at about 615 this morning on Santa Catalina Road. That's in Valley Center in North County. And so far, there are no reports of any injuries, but this has been going on since of course, early this morning. So we're continuing to work on trying to figure out what exactly happened. We're getting reports that it started off in a barn in that area and then spread to trees, but we are still working to confirm if that information is correct. And obviously because of how large this fire fire looks, we're trying to figure out if anyone might have been hurt. So I will bring you any new developments as soon as I get them in the live center. I'm Kalina Estrino. Brian. Thank you, Kalina. Happening today, we'll get new details about a cold case murder that's finally been solved after 25 years. 84 year old Angela Kleinsorge was sexually assaulted and stabbed in her Mission Valley home. Police believe someone broke into her home through a window. A reserve San Diego police detective solved this case with the help of DNA evidence. The police chief and DA will announce the results along with the victim's children at a news conference this afternoon. We will bring you that on later newscasts. Happening today, a San Diego student shot at Northern Arizona University is expected to testify. Nick Prado was one of four people shot on campus in 2015. Prado survived with a neck wound, but his best friend Colin died in his arms. Prado spoke exclusively with us about the year. This was last year when he talked to us. The accused gunman Stephen Jones says this was all in self-defense. He faces first degree murder and aggravated assault charges. Happening now, police are searching for this missing teenage girl. Please take a good look. 16 year old Annabelle Chamberlain hasn't been seen since yesterday morning. Her family is concerned she could try to harm herself and that she may have left the county. Annabelle is five foot six, 145 pounds. She was wearing white polka dot pajamas. Please call police if you see her. Breaking news update from Naval Base San Diego. Crews are cleaning up a water and a chemical spill. We had this live this morning on 10 News this morning when it was just a mess. The water overflowing into two parking lots. No word yet on what caused that spill. New today, this year's mosquito season could be extra vicious because of all the rain we had this winter. 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala joins us live in National City with the warnings. Hey, Mimi. 
Hey, Brian, that's right. All it takes really is a plant pot just like this, any gardening equipment with water in them, even a bottle cap this small to really give mosquitoes a place to breed. That's why county health experts want you to prevent, protect and report. Now the two mosquitoes that they're most concerned about are the ones that carry the Zika virus and the West Nile virus. Those are causing the most concern this year. Now the invasive 80s mosquitoes that does carry the Zika virus are not native to San Diego County. The 82 cases here were travel related. People got the virus while out of the country, but officials want to make sure it stays out of our county. Vector control crews sprayed neighborhoods where people with the virus live to make sure it didn't spread to any mosquitoes. But with all the rain we got this year, experts predict a busier mosquito season. There's a lot more standing water outside of homes and places people wouldn't think to check, like Frisbees even, other toys, wheels, anything that can really hold water they do want you to clear. So while county health experts spray and do their part, they want everyone to pitch in and help uh, clear breeding areas and protect themselves. Vector Control is even giving free mosquito-eating fish. We're continuing to monitor you know, everywhere around the county just to make sure that there's not too many mosquitoes. And if there are, we'll, we'll intervene. The county also has a free app where you can report uh, mosquitoes or even dead birds to be tested for West Nile virus. It's called Fight the Bite. You can find that in the App Store. We're live in National City. Mimi Alcala, 10 News. Some good advice. Thank you, Mimi. If you have questions about what to clear on your property or signs of the viruses, go to 10news.com and click on the red TV button. Some new developments for a man accused of threatening churches on Easter. Deputies captured him this morning in Wisconsin. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the quiet arrest. Wisconsin manhunt over. Joseph Jacobowski captured this morning after an intense 10 day search that had the state on edge. Law enforcement officers and many citizens throughout our country are breathing a sigh of relief. It's time for change. The man seen in this Facebook video accused of stealing 18 guns from a Janesville store before burning up his car. Revolution. And sending a threatening 161 page manifesto to President Trump. Local station WTMJ obtained 35 pages from the suspect's handwritten letter calling the government a gang of terrorists. The number of weapons he took, we feel that uh, he is posing a threat. That threat intensified when investigators looked into a separate letter mailed by someone claiming to be Jacobowski. It was directed at unspecified churches in the Milwaukee area, threatening unspecified violence this Easter Sunday. Governor Scott Walker tweeting a thank you to law enforcement. We are thankful that people don't have to worry about Easter weekend activities. Police say Jacobowski was taken into custody on a farm without incident near Reedstown, more than two hours away from that gun store. Well, he gave up. He gave up peacefully. Um, again, there was an overwhelming force there. Authorities are planning to return Jacobowski back to the Janesville area where he's facing more charges. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Happening now, the parents of this murdered college student are hoping somebody can help find his killer. 17 years ago today, Andrew Moore was found dead in his apartment near City College. His motorcycle was stolen that day, but was found the next month. Every year, his parents fly from Pennsylvania to San Diego to present a City College student with a scholarship in Andrew's name. There is a $56,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest. Still looking for information. All right, 10 News has new video now of the mother of all bombs falling on ISIS in Afghanistan. The Afghan Ministry of Defense says the U.S. bomb killed 36 ISIS fighters. This is the largest non-nuclear bomb ever used by the U.S. military. The Pentagon did not need the president's permission to use it. It was dropped on a remote area where ISIS was hiding in tunnels and caves. New today, two local congressmen who are weighing in on the action in Syria. Representatives Juan Vargas and Daryl Issa joined us on set this morning. We asked them about the recent U.S. airstrikes. I think the president should come back to us and we should authorize the use of force again or not. I mean, we, it does seem that we're escalating time and time again without them coming back and having the American people through the Congress decide if we're going too far. The congressman also spoke about the sewage bill in Tijuana that's affecting our beaches and the future of health care. 
Well, let's just into the 10 News Live Center. The U.S. Navy is banning vaping on ships after a series of explosions and injuries. Here's a video that we have on our ABC News site. Now, those batteries that are inside the vaping devices are said to be overheating, and that is the problem that has led to first degree burns as well as explosions. Now, they say this policy is set in order to protect sailors along with the fleet. For now, though, the ban is just temporary, of course, until further notice, but it does start next month. In the Live Center, I'm Kalina Estrinos. Thank you, Kalina. Happening now, the main spillway at California's Oroville Dam is open again. It was shut down in February because of erosion. The emergency spillway was also damaged. That still needs repairs. Now, crews will try to get that done before the wet season starts in November. The main spillway will stay open for a couple of weeks. Breaking news update, an early morning earthquake struck near Julian, but a lot of people tell us they didn't feel a thing. The 3.3 quake happened about 3.30 this morning. There are no reports of any damage or injuries. 10 News reached out to businesses in Julian, and they tell us they're not having any problems.